We've done a few Meet the Owners in the past and I think the current record is uh, a couple of owners who between them own four boats. That's pretty impressive, but I'm here today with James from boats.co.uk. James owns an entire boat sales company. James, how many boats do you own right now? Well, it changes daily, but uh, today about 100. <laughs> That's We've insane. got about 100 boats. Wow. And I always say to people when they say, oh, you know, the service bill has just come in for my boat and it's £5,000. I say, well, you've only got one. <laughs> you've only got one to worry about. We have to worry about a whole marina full. So, yeah, we've got a lot of boats. That's yeah. incredible. And what yeah. would that add up to? Um, I don't check it that often, but we carry between 15 and £20 million pounds worth of stock. That's amazing. Yeah. Because you're quite unusual in that regard because most sales outlets in my experience they're either selling new boats and they take part exchange so they'll say okay we've got two or three new boats and we've got that one over there which we took in part exchange against a new one but you just go out and actively buy them don't you we do we are unusual because as you say most dealers are brokers there are some other dealers like us um, but we we put our money where our mouth is so um we're always buying boats every day all day every day and that's all i've ever done and we do it seven days a week and it's it's really it's really good fun. It's uh, it's very very demanding, but it's a lovely business to be in. Yeah, absolutely. So how does it work? I mean, if I ring you up and say, James, think about selling my boat. It's a Genoa 805 liter. It's 2006. It's got a D4 260 engine in. Would you give me a prize over the phone, or would you want to come and see it, or how does that work? Well, um, in our industry, as you know, we don't have a black book. There's not a glasses guide. So a lot of it is in my head. So I'm thinking straight away, and you didn't actually give me a warning about that before <laughs> we started. Uh, but I think that's about 50 grand in the current market, would be my, my guess. Yeah. Um, because I'm dealing, or we're dealing with so many boats every day, um, and so many obscure makes and big brands, we literally know the pricing off the top of our head. Right. Um, we're selling an awful lot of boats, and a lot of them don't even reach the website. Wow. Yeah. So um, it's it's done on that on that basis. I wish I, I wish there was a guide. Of course. But, yeah. But it doesn't wouldn't work. The quantities no. are too small, aren't they? They you are. Often say that to me when I was selling boats. How yeah. do you, how do you work it out? And and the trouble is, certainly from my experience, you can have two boats that are theoretically identical, yeah. but actually are totally different because one's got the wrong engines or one's the wrong hull right. color. Yeah. Or That's whatever right. else. And that can throw it out to be a non-seller. Yeah. You know, a wrong colour can actually make a boat what we call a no-bid. Wow. So it means that we won't buy it. That's incredible. Yeah. It's interesting, actually, because I would say we're spot on at 50 grand as well. That's exactly where okay, they are. Okay, good, moment. good. Because otherwise <laughs> I'd look really silly. <laughs> no, no, no. The thing I actually had was 49999 That was yeah. the price I thought that would ask today. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you'd probably get offers very close to that. Yeah, yeah, no, I think I think you're right from what I've seen. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so tell me what your bravest punt has been on a boat. What, what have you bought where you bought it and then after just thought, oh, I don't know, that was a bit brave. Oh God, honestly, there's so there's so many. Um, I mean, the one that just springs to mind recently um, was the uh, cigarette that we bought. We bought a cigarette, a Top Gun 38. Yeah, but I just didn't mind because it just looks so much fun. It's got twin V8 petrols. It's 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 just so pretty, yeah. and I just thought this is a real kind of gamble. But I just thought we'll go for it. Um, that's not a great amount of money. That was you know eighty ninety thousand. Um, but you know I've bought um, boats up to two million pounds blind. Wow. You know um, we, there's a lot of trust in the boat industry, and the industry is actually quite small, as you know. Mm. Um, so a lot of the dealers we deal with, we put a lot of trust into them because a lot of the boats will come from other dealers. Yeah. And they'll say to me, James, this boat has done seven hours. The guy used it for three weeks, and uh, it needs to be sold today. Um, and obviously, I just have to assume it's brand new. Yeah. Um, so I remember I bought a Princess S65, and um, that's a two million pound boat, mm. uh, 2018. And the handover champagne was still in the fridge unopened. Wow. <laughs> so um, change of circumstance. Yeah. And the champagne's in the fridge. It was about to be handed over. It wasn't hands over. We bought it. That's incredible. Yeah. Wow. So um, I think boats of that value always make you um, shudder. Yeah. Because it's a lot of money. Um, so, but I think it's the the ones that are obscure, like the like the cigarette, that probably are the biggest punts. Yeah.
Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and there's a Sunseeker Superhawk I saw already. Is that yours or is that brokerage? Yeah, so uh, that's a great boat. I love that. Triple yeah. diesels on a shaft drive, two speed gearboxes. I mean, yeah. what a fantastic boat. <laughs> Dry stored from you. Um, so yeah, we, we bought that, we sold it immediately. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the customer used it in the UK for a few months. We didn't suit him. So we've literally just bought that back. Right. So, um, that is a really, really nice boat. It's a collector's item really. Yeah. I know it needs a few little bits and pieces doing, but it's really, really special. It's a pretty, pretty boat. It is pretty. And it's one of those boats that I don't think will ever go out of fashion. I think it always looks cool. Yeah. Um, and I think it will hold its money really well. And that's a couple hundred grand, 210, I think it is. Um, if you bought that, you could keep that forever and have the most fun and not lose any money. Yeah, absolutely. What's wrong with that? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Have all that fun and yeah. not cost you any money. And the thing that is as well, it's not like there's a new version of it. Well, there is no. a new support coming out, but it's not going to look like that. No, it's, isn't that, is that the outboard one? Uh, no, that's the Hawk 38. Okay. They are bringing out, I think it's a Super Hawk 55, but are it's going to be a bit wider. It's not going to be, because okay. that's like a pencil. Uh, it's like a it? pencil, yeah. And yeah. and obviously the good thing about a pencil, like the cigarette, mm. is it just slices through the seat. Yeah. Um, and every... Uh, millimeter or inch you go wider as you know it just makes sea keeping worse yeah for sure. so it's a um, big trade-off isn't it always big trade-off yeah. between accommodation and handling yeah um and that that's actually another whole subject area because we have sometimes customers that come to us and say james i want all this space and i want to go this speed and i want to go in these sea conditions and i said sorry yeah. it doesn't exist yeah and you have to kind of educate people that you know everything has a trade-off for sure i always say to people you know, if you look at it, the best shape possible for sea yeah. keeping yeah. is like a is like a dart. It's like a pencil. It would, yeah. And it that's would. the worst possible shape for accommodation. The it best is. possible shape for accommodation yeah. is a is a square box. Which be is like the worst a be like a pontoon boat, like those American exactly. pontoon boats. Exactly. Yeah. That's the best shape for accommodation, yeah. but the worst shape for sea keeping. That's right. So you're constantly yeah. in a battle between yeah. those two forces. That's right. To get the best compromise. And actually, if you listen to most people's wish lists, because I say to people, "What do you want?" and they really all laugh. And quite a lot of it is contradictory. Yeah. And I say, look, you, you do you want that or do you want that? Yeah. Because you you can't have both. Yeah. Um, there's some very special boats that have a really beautiful balance of both, um, but most of them it's one or the other. Yeah, for sure. Or certainly a bias towards a bias. One yeah. or the other. Yeah. 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 A bias. And of the boats that have gone through your hands, which I guess I mean, how long have you been doing this? So, Dad. I'm, I'm nearly 48, so Dad started it in the 60s um, after leaving Fords. His father was very high, high up at Fords, that's why we're in Essex. And um, so Dad started in the 60s, I was born in the 70s. I'm the eldest of four brothers, all the brothers do it. We're all working here together with Dad. Dad is still working, he's 80, I don't think you see him today. But um, he's, actually I've sent him out on the road. Right. I try and send him out as much as possible. <laughs> so today he's out on the road collecting a bay liner. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, dad started it in the 60s and that's all, all we've ever done. So I've never done anything else wow. other than boats. You've never had a real job? No, I've never had. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I always it's say. True, it's true, yeah. it's true, it's true. All I've ever done is dealt with boats wow. and boating. And you know, it just means that just really comfortable about it, you know, and that's all I'm ever going to do. Yeah. Because, you know, we've, we own the marina, we've, we're, we're totally invested yeah. in boats. So that's all I'm ever going to do. But um, last year, um, I mean, it's busy. I mean, last year we sold uh, 360 boats. That's insane. Which is, um, which well, is why, which one, why one, one a day. Great, yeah, one a day. That's which bonkers. Is, yeah, that's why my, look at my <laughs> Look, compared to yours, look, you've got a bit of colour. These, 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 these are platinum highlights. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah but look, mine is totally grey. <laughs> um, and then we've got um, charter boats as well, yeah. which keep us busy. So out of all the boats yeah. that have gone through your hands, which must be... Thousands. Tens of thousands, It is surely. tens of thousands, it is, yeah. I remember the 7,000th customer, and that was that was quite a long time ago, yeah. Okay, so of all the boats, yeah. which ones have you gone, I don't want to part with that, I want to keep it, or has there been any that you have kept? Um, do you know, that's a really good question, and I do know the answer. Um, I don't know why, but I don't know if you remember, in the 80s, Fletcher made lots of little speedboats yep. with the Mercury outboards. Mm -hmm. and Black did, Max? The Black Max package. Yeah, yeah. And it had a, the, um, the Panther. That's it, on the, the side. side. Yeah, 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 I do. And they had the matching trailer. Matching the trailer graphics. and the graphics and everything. Yeah. yeah. I 
so when I so in the eighties, I was I don't know ten to fifteen, whatever that mm. kind of age. So that made a big impression on me. And Fletcher was selling loads of them. Yeah. Uh, about five years ago, a customer part exchanged an absolutely immaculate. I think it was a one seventy GTO with the Black Max um, down the side and on, and the color coded trailer. And I hadn't seen one all together like mm. that for a long time. So that's not for sale. That's in the shed. Wow. It's in the shed. I haven't shown it to you, but it's in the shed up there. Yeah. And we just said, well, we haven't seen one like that before. Let's pull it to one side. And we all identified with it. So, I mean, that's only a, a price. I know it's worth £10,000. So you've got all these million pound boats. Yeah. You're going, actually, I want that one. I want that little, <laughs> I want that little Fletcher. And I say to people, of course, we sell boats from 5000 to £5 million, Yeah. But actually... Um, we never forget that you know you can have as much fun on the water or more sometimes with that five ten thousand pound speedboat than you can with some of the multi mega yachts. Yeah. That's not to say the multi mega yachts aren't fun. They are, but in a different way. For sure. Um, and I think it's important. Well, I really feel this. It's important to keep people getting onto the ladder of boating. Yeah. Whether that's on a jet ski, cause we, as you know, we sell the Kawasaki stand up jet skis. Yeah. Or, you know, it's a speedboat or it's a big gym palace. Yeah. And everyone has equal right to that water and to use it and enjoy it. Well, I have a motto which often gets quoted on, on uh, Aquaholic, which is if you're floating, you're boating. Yeah, that's right, I agree. That's exactly absolutely, what it is. I, I absolutely agree. Yeah. And actually, you know, we do sell sailing boats. Um, I'm not an expert in sailing boats, but we've sold sailing boats. And, you know, I don't believe in this them and us thing with sail and motor. No, I mean, nonsense. obviously, it's good for a laugh down, down the pub. <laughs> but generally speaking, if anyone's on the water, brilliant. Yeah. It's, I'm all for it. Totally agree. Totally mm. agree. So you've got, how many sites have you got? You've got this one in Essex. You've got Paul. Yes. So um, Essex, Paul, Calador. Um, we've recently changed over to Fairline, as, as you know. Yep. Um, and um, we're really excited about that. We were Fairline's biggest dealer for many years. Um, and we're coming back now to do Mallorca and um, the east coast of the UK. Um, so excited about that. Um, but Calador really is about uh, looking after our customers' boats abroad and charter and now the fair, new Fairline sales, yeah. which we'll be developing over the next year or so. Cool. So um, we're really looking forward to that. Excellent. So we've got a lot, um, a lot going on, but it's all good. And any other dealerships in the pipeline? Um, we do get offered an awful lot of dealerships. Um, but the thing is, we've always been very good at dealing with used boats. So we're always quite picky about the new boats we sell. Mm -hmm. um, and we grew the business through used. And actually, what we say when we are selling a new boat is we're not selling a new boat, we're buying in a used boat. Because most people you sell a new boat to are trading in. Right, okay. So um, in this business, the skill is understanding the used. Yeah. Because if you can understand and price the used boat correctly, of course you can sell the new and of course you can sell the used. Yeah. So for us, used boats are number one for us because it's just a, it's a, such an exciting marketplace. You know, things change up, down, sideways. It's brilliant fun. Yeah, yeah. And we can obviously, with the market, set the values as according to the market. Yeah, for sure. Um, with manufacturers, they tell you the price that it has to be sold at, the manufacturer's recommended retail price. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it. But with used, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. And I like I like that. Yeah, freedom, and it's there, isn't it? It's physical. Whereas it, when you're selling new, as I used to find when I was in yeah, boat sales, yeah, if you can take somebody down and go, "That's the boat. Look, you could be on that tomorrow yes, that's or, right. or whatever." That's right, yeah, rather than, "Well, yeah, we can order it." I mean, and I have to say, ordering a boat is fantastic. Good you fun, know, good fun. choosing all the upholstery and the extras yeah. and all that. I'm not yeah. knocking it for a second, but there's something about something very tangible about showing them the boat yes. and going, "There it is." Yeah, you can go, and also. Um, um, with new boats now, you have to be very patient, um, up to two years for some new boats. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it, 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 you know, that's a long time to wait. Yeah. Um, so what I'll try and do, if someone wants a new boat and we can't supply it for a while, is get them into a used boat, which will give them a guaranteed trade-in price when the new boat's ready. Right. So they can get boating now. Yeah. And then we take that one in so they've got their new boat when they want to. Yeah. So they can have best of both worlds, really. Yeah, makes sense. And that, that tends to, to work quite well. Yeah. Um, 
keeps uh, keeps and keeps and boating. Yeah, and that's what it's all about, isn't it? All about, yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Can I ask you some questions? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Big change. So, um, what's your favourite boat of 2021? <laughs> now, I watched the video list, uh -huh. so I know some of the princesses did quite well. Yeah. I, um, that's a tricky one. Um, this is. I'm talking about for you. For me personally. Okay. For you, you know, not not if you had an unlimited budget, but yeah. if you had a reasonable budget, let's yeah. say. Up to a million quid. Up to a million quid. See that kind of. Because you liked that Tiger Forty Seven early, didn't you? Yeah, Tiger Forty Seven was good. Are you good. talking new or used? Um, I think either. Okay. I think either. I've always had a soft spot for the Princess V Forty. V Forty, yeah. So twenty seventeen, twenty eighteen, nineteen twenty, that kind of year. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Because I think that's a nice package of being manageable it's just yeah. about the size yeah. that i could cope with on my own yeah it doesn't mean you want to go boating on your own necessarily but if you're no. taking friends who yeah. are not used to boating yeah you have to worry about them needing to get involved in it but it's big enough that you can across the channel it's big enough that you could stay on for it's a week quick. comfortably it's quite fast it's, it's an good, open it's boat looking, sporty yeah, exactly nicely it ticks, made ticks an awful lot of boxes yeah so. i must admit i love the v40 and the predecessor the v39 and we've yeah. sold lots of those yeah um like all boats now the new ones are getting so expensive i yeah. mean um just before we left princess our price went up and it was six hundred thousand. Yeah. yeah think about brand new so, I know, it does, so, a lot of money. so it does fit in that uh bracket yeah um but I, no, I think that's a great all-rounder. That is a great all-rounder. I'll tell you what I saw today second-hand. I thought, oh, do you know, I would never have considered one of those, but yeah. actually I really like it. Yeah. Windy 43 Typhoon. Oh, yes. It's yeah, very I've left of field. Of yeah, I've had a couple of those. What, all the soft top? Or is yeah, hard? it's all soft top. All yeah. soft top, yeah. all hoods. Yeah, I yeah. remember those, yeah. Berthon had one for sale, yeah. and I just came across it on their website, yeah. and I just thought, oh, do you know? And how much was that? It wasn't mad money, and I can't honestly remember. I've 199 it was, I was going to say, it was It was a bit under two, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was guess about that kind of money. Yeah, it yeah. struck me as, I mean, it depends on the year, of course, and yeah. I can't remember what year it was, but it did strike me as a nice quality boat, good sea keeping, good accommodation, nicely yeah. finished. Yeah, no, I, I agree with I, that. I could have enjoyed that. Yeah, I agree with that. So, um, you've gone there for two really high quality boats. Mm. Yeah, because Windy usually made Princess R. Yeah. Um, and I, it's funny, actually, because the market we're finding... Uh, on used, let's just talk about used, is that most people are happier buying a quality boat now mm. that's even a few years older than um, buying something that's brand new and not as well made. Mm. And we won't mention any names because <laughs> uh, I have to sell everything too. Yeah. Um, but um, so the, the British builders, you know, the Sunseekers, the, um, the older sea lines, the fair lines, uh, princesses mm. of 2000 to 2012 yeah in a particular size range of 30 to 50 at the moment you just they just don't exist yeah because they're really well built they're still going strong they might need some upholstery yeah but they're a really good fundamental boat and they hold their money i think there's a couple of reasons for that firstly uh, the price of new ones is so much now that it's very yeah. hard for people to change up. Yeah. So they yeah. hang on to what they've got. I agree with that. Yeah. And the second thing is, if you think about it, from about 2007 to maybe 2015, which is the area you're talking about, yes, there wasn't is, that much yeah. being sold new back then, was there? There wasn't. There wasn't. In 20, I remember in 2012, I was selling new fair lines and it literally just stopped. Yeah, I exactly. mean, we went down to, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, not. it wasn't a very comfortable time, I'll be honest. I had 15... Um, no, no, I didn't. I had twenty. Wow. I had twenty new fair lines in stock in twenty eleven and twenty twelve, mm. and I remember three of them were Squadron sixty fives. <laughs> That's some serious commitment, isn't it? That was a serious commitment. Yeah. Now they're one and a half million each, so yeah. I had f four and a half million pounds worth of Squadron sixty fives. Crazy. Um, and every morning I'd drive past them and just go, God, I've got to sell these. <laughs> <laughs> it's motivating, isn't it? Yeah, it's motivating. Yeah, very yeah. motivating. I'll tell you one thing. They all sold. Mm -hmm. And they were fantastic boats. And people, lot, some of them, people have still got them. Yeah. Um, some have changed. But when they started to sell, bang. Yeah. They all went flying out the door. Do you know, it's a really interesting thing. When I was a broker, I used to find this all the time, that you'd have a boat come up for sale yeah. and it would be, yeah. I don't know, call it a, a Princess 385, yeah. wherever this happening. Yeah. You have a sale for a month, two months, three months, somebody would come along, they'd buy it, and somebody else with a 385 would go, oh, you just sold that one like mine. I'm thinking about selling mine. And you'd find somebody for them like that. 
I agree. The second one would go yeah. within weeks. I agree. And actually, uh, on the same vein, I sometimes have one, two, three boats come up for sale, which are identical. Mm. You know, I, I remember Arval 23s. We sold those Arval fishing boats. And there'd be the third one would come up for brokerage, and I'd, or, or, or we bought it. And I'd go, oh, God, we've got three of them now. And then the, once the first one goes, yeah. the other two, like you just said, seconds, just yeah. gone in no time. Yeah. And so whenever I see one, two or three boats now, I go, oh, well, here we go. Just just wait, just wait. <laughs> and you know what? It's exactly the same. I had yeah. it with uh, a big boat the other day. I had it with, I think with Princess S65s. Really? We had two or three of them. Then yeah. bang, 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 all gone. Yeah. And F70s. I had three F70s. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. There were two Prince, here when I was yeah, here Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I had three F70s. Princess F70s. These are two and a half million pounds each. Me, three million pounds each. Um, one, two, three, go, all gone. And then people go, oh, have you got an F70? I had three yeah. last week. Yeah, where the hell were you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, that, and I had them for a few months and I've got yeah. none of them yeah. now. And so I've got used to the um, the quirks yeah. of the business and I don't um, I don't panic so much now. I just go, okay, calm down. Everything sells and everything does sell. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter what it is. People would say to me sometimes, they go, well, yeah, but that boat there, you'll, they, you'd never sell that. You know, it might, it might be, I don't know, a big 40-foot boat with petrol engines, for example, which are, which are always hard work. Maybe a flybridge boat, not a yeah. boat. They go, well, you'd never sell that, you'd never sell that. And I say, okay, if I put that boat for sale for a pound, would you buy it? Like, now? <laughs> and they go, yeah. And I go, right, well, somewhere between a pound and what that guy wants for it is the price that that boat will sell that's, for. That's right. Yeah, Every, everything's got a value. Every, everything's got a value. And um, that actually moves me on to something else, which is quite funny, which is part exchange because we truly believe that everything's got a value. Um, and we take boats in part exchange, but over the years we've taken um, motorbikes, um, lots of expensive cars. I took a couple of houses in part exchange once, which sold, I took a really nice flat in part exchange that sold. Um, but the funniest part exchange is I took, and I've not made this up, I took in a V8 powered milk float. <laughs> Like you do. <laughs> yeah. And you know the sticker they used to have on the doors with the flat windscreen? Yeah. And a sticker on the door like um, milk, drink milk or something. Mm. It said, got a lot of bottle. <laughs> and when you revved it, it had this big V8 and it, it kind of moved to side to side. It was absolutely fantastic. And that sold. And yeah. that, I think a local guy bought that for two and a half thousand pounds. Yeah. So um, we do have some fun with the park exchanges too. Yeah. <laughs> that really made me laugh. That's incredible. The V8 milk float. Yeah, God. for sure. Where, I've got another question for you. Go on. Um, and you're not allowed to say Torquay. <laughs> um, you've been all around the world yep. in marinas, look at all these lovely boats. And uh, I have too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's lovely, isn't it? Going to all these different places sure. and seeing it. Where's the place that is outside of Torquay that you would also like to keep a boat if you could... South of France. South of France. Yeah. Right. That was instant. There. You knew that straight yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. South of France. Okay, so know. where? And I've always said, if, if I had the money, I would put a nice Flybridge cruiser in Cannes. Okay. Because I love Cannes. Yeah. And then you've yeah. got Saint-Tropez, you've mm. got Monaco the other way, you've got so many great and places. And you've got Italy as well. Obviously, just, just yeah. on the coast of Monaco, you've got Italy. Yeah. Because I kept a boat in um, Antibes. Right. For a few, about three years. Yeah. And I must admit, it is a, an enchanting part of the coast. For sure. Because, like you say, can you got those islands. What are those islands called? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, I know exactly what you mean, and I can't think of the name either. Yeah, everyone anchors in between. Yeah, them. If yeah. you're allowed to. You're allowed to anchor in between them I think they're changing it now, they're changing aren't they? But you yeah. used to be able to. But the other thing is as well, and it sounds a silly thing, mm. but accessibility. There's so many flights. Nice. You go to Bristol, yeah. straight down to Nice, nice yeah. and then you have a car waiting for you at Nice, and you're there in about... 30 minutes, 40 yes, minutes. that is true. And it's dead easy. But there's a lot of thunderstorms at Nice. <laughs> there is a lot of thunderstorms. That, that, that mountain range yeah. behind, the clouds come in and you get a lot of thunderstorms. I have had a couple of exciting landings there. Yeah, but I, I think, um, well actually, I think um, the south of France for many, many years has been the number one. Mm. But actually in terms of location of, of where we now sell the, the Brits, the most boats, it is Mallorca. I can understand why. Yeah. After I did yeah. that charter with you guys. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. And that would be, yeah. that would be number two. Two. Palmer. Yeah. Because again, accessibility, fantastic. Yes. Location, fantastic. Mm. Weather, fantastic. 
everything you want. It's right there. And, and you know, in Mallorca, you can just go out of the bay into the next bay, and there's never ending bays. Yeah. And then if you get bored of Mallorca, you've got Ibiza. Yeah. And if you're bored of that, you've got Menorca. And then you can even go to the Spanish mainland. Of course. Um, and I think for me, that makes it my favourite destination outside of the UK. I think UK boating is fantastic if the weather's good. That's the thing. We've had days when we've been up the River Dart or anchored off Prices. down there. And, yeah, and we've said we could be anywhere in the world to be yeah. no better than this. But yeah. what you can't do is say to your friends, right, two weeks' time, no. we're going to have a weekend on the boat. Because you get there, it's like, oh, sorry, guys, wind it's, picked up, it's raining, picked up, whatever it's, it's else. Raining. And that's what's nice about the South of France yeah. and Mallorca, yeah. because it's reliable. Yeah, It's reliable weather, isn't it? For sure. And that's what makes such a difference to boating. If you have um, a good group of friends, a nice comfortable boat and uh, good weather I mean you've got everything you've got, you've got heaven you've got, you have got heaven <laughs> <laughs> and you know what it's very difficult and I don't know if you find the same to try and take people to that place just talking to them yeah it's so difficult you've got to experience it you've got to experience it and you know uh, I've said this before on, um, on, on, on my, one of my videos about um, enjoying boats is that you know the biggest regret I hear from people is that they didn't buy a boat sooner. Yeah, that's the thing I hear the most. Um, they might have sold their business or have got a retirement, and they said, "Right, I've bought my boat," and they've had a great summer. Um, and I say, you know, any regrets? And no, no, no. I just regret that I've not done this for the last twenty-five years. Yeah. Yeah. And so I try and pass that information on to people. Yeah, because it doesn't matter what boat they buy. Completely, it could be a canoe, it could yeah. be anything. Yeah, but just get on the water and experience it because it, it really is another world, isn't it? Best thing in the world. Yeah, it, it really is. And it's it? the freedom, you know. You can buy yourself a Ferrari, but you're still sat behind the same truck. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, Not true. as anything yeah. wrong with Ferraris. No, I one, but no. I wouldn't have one instead of a boat. No, no, it's true. That is that is true. Oh, you can have both if you're very lucky. You well, can it, have you can have the Ferrari and the boat. Exactly. That's <laughs> what. Yeah, to two both is great. But if I could only have one, I'd have the boat. We've actually got some very lucky customers now who are actually. Um, I mean, this is fantastic. They've got a UK boat and a boat, boat abroad. I've met a couple of people recently. Oh. We've done Meet the Owners recently with yes. two people who've got exactly that set up, yeah. and that's, that's perfect. I mean, that is jackpot repeater, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Because, you know, it's nice to go down at the weekend to potter on your boat in the UK with a short drive from home, yeah. or stay overnight, or what have you, at short notice. But then to have that boat abroad and enjoy that lovely weather and scenery, I mean, that is the best of both worlds. Yeah. Um, and I've got actually more and more customers that are fortunate enough to be able to afford to do that and i'm very jealous because that is <laughs> yeah that's it that is it that's yeah. that's that would be i'd be very very happy with that yeah fantastic well i think we've probably put the world to rights haven't we i, th I think we have yeah, yeah i think we should have more chats like this i yeah. love talking about boats i could talk about them all day long i know so we'll end up with a two-hour video if we're not careful <laughs> yeah okay brilliant yeah, well, thank it's you been, very much it's been a pleasure james no and problem. um yeah and thank you for letting me look at all your lovely boats no, today thank, thank you pleasure to see you See you again soon. Good stuff. All right. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. Let us know what you think. And, uh, and let me know if you want me to do more of these as well, because we could meet some other people. And this could be a whole new series. You can be the very first. Oh, happy to do that. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> okay. You. Excellent. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.